ever ordered takeout online? You're starving, thinking about food, not data, right? But somewhere, a company's processing that order, your address, payment info, maybe even sending it across borders. That's our deep dive today, data privacy laws, what they mean for you. We've got GDPR, CCPA, LGPD, PIPL, a whole alphabet soup of regulations. It's a lot, especially for global companies. So think of this as your crash course. By the end, you'll know how your data is protected or not and what control you actually have. Let's start with the heavy hitters. What better place to begin than GDPR? Ah, yes, the General Data Protection Regulation. The EU's big statement on data protection making waves since 2018. Waves might be an understatement. This doesn't just apply to companies in the EU, though, right? You're right. GDPR applies to any company dealing with EU resident data, no matter where they're based. It's a bold claim setting a precedent globally. And those fines we hear about, those aren't just for show, are they? Not at all. We're talking up to 20 million or 4% of global turnover, whichever is higher, for violating GDPR. Data protection is not optional. Okay, moving over to the U.S., we've got CCPA California's answer. What's the story there? The California Consumer Privacy Act, CCPA, is about Californians having more control knowing what data is collected, opting out of sales, even having it deleted. So more power to the people than before. Exactly. And while the fines aren't as high as GDPR, up to $7,500 per violation, that's still something. Enough to get a company's attention, I'd say. Speaking of attention-grabbing, Brazil's LGPD is up next. What's the deal with that one? Le Geral de Proteção de Dados, LGPD, is often called Brazil's GDPR. Similar approach to data protection user rights. It's comprehensive and, like GDPR, comes with some hefty penalties. I bet companies are seeing a pattern here. Data privacy is global now. Absolutely. And we can't talk data privacy without mentioning China's PL. Okay, PIPL, which stands for? Personal Information Protection Law. This one's different. Data sovereignty is key. China wants control over how data flows in and out. User consent, cross-border transfers, it's all front and center. So companies need to be extra careful in China's digital space. Precisely. And ready for the consequences. PIPL's fines go up to about $7.7 million, or 5% of annual revenue, whichever is higher. Wow, those are some serious numbers. <sighs> this is shaking things up, but is this just the beginning? You could say that. This is a global shift. More and more countries are making or strengthening their own laws. It's constantly evolving. So we've got this web of data privacy laws all over the world. It's a lot for companies, sure, but what does it actually mean for me? You know, just browsing online, ordering my takeout. That's the key question, right? It might seem distant, but it impacts our digital lives in a very real way. Like, think about GDPR and PIPL, both big on controlling data across borders. Yeah, that seems to be a common thing. It is, and it creates a real puzzle for companies working internationally. Imagine one regulation says you can't send certain data out, another says you can't bring that same data in. High stakes, for sure. That's like, I don't even know, juggling while balancing on a tightrope. Mm -hmm. And then you add in how each regulation deals with user consent, right? Yeah, exactly. GDPR, it's all about opting in. Very strict. CCPA, it's more about opting out. Sounds like a small difference, but it changes how a company can even collect data. And then there's figuring out what personal data, even IS. It's different for each law. It's yeah. a good point. Imagine having a passport, but each country interprets it differently. What's sensitive in one place might not be in another. And that's got to be tricky with transferring data between countries, especially with rulings like Schrems II adding even more to think about. You're right. Schrems II was a big deal. The Court of Justice of the European Union basically invalidated the EU-US privacy shield. That was the framework that let data flow from the EU to the US. So what happened to the companies that were relying on that? Chaos, to put it lightly. They had to find new ways, and fast, to legally transfer data. Shows you how quickly things change in this landscape. But some companies are doing well, not just surviving, but really getting ahead in this new data privacy world. Oh, yeah. Like who? Give me the success stories. Well, the big tech companies like Microsoft and Google, they offer some valuable lessons. People like John Frank, he was the chief compliance officer at Microsoft, and Peter Fleischer, global privacy counsel at Google... They've really shaped how their companies approach all of this. So what's their secret? What are they doing differently? Microsoft, under Frank, they went global first. Instead of different systems for each region, they decided to apply GDPR-level protections to everyone, everywhere. So they raised the bar, even if the rules in some places were lower. Interesting. Did it work? It seems like it. Might have cost more at the start, but it made things simpler for them. And they look good doing it like a company that cares about data privacy. 
Imagine offering everyone first-class service, even if some just paid for economy. Makes sense. And I guess that plays into their privacy by design idea, building privacy in from the start. Exactly. Better to have it baked in than try to add it later. Speaking of doing things well, Google has a different approach, but just as interesting, right? Mm. Something about a modular compliance framework. You got it. Peter Fleischer at Google has been a big part of this. Imagine, instead of one huge, complicated system, they've got a more flexible one. It lets them adjust to each region's rules without rebuilding everything. So more adaptable, less disruption when new rules pop up, which seems to be happening a lot. Exactly. It's like having the right tool for each job, depending on what the data privacy rules are in that part of the world. And one of those tools, especially with China's PIPL, is data localization. How does that work? So with data localization, you're basically keeping data within a country's borders. Instead of sending it all over and dealing with those legal issues, companies like Google are setting up data centers in those regions. Keeps the data flowing, but locally, so it's all above board. It's like instead of doing business from across the world, you open up shop in that country. Play by their rules from the inside. Clever how these companies adapt. But we've talked a lot about companies and laws. Where do WE fit in? You know, regular people, not tech giants. That's the best part. You're not just along for the ride. Knowing this stuff lets you make smarter choices online, be a more aware user. So we're not totally powerless just because we don't have our own data centers and lawyers. Not at all. You can do things like check out those privacy dashboards so many companies have now. You can see what data they've got on you, how they're using it. Kind of like checking your credit score. It's your information. You have a right to know. Right. We just click agree so often. Who knows what we're agreeing to half the time? It's true. And even beyond that, just be more careful about the info you do share going forward. Like, think twice before giving your email for a discount load. Is it really worth it compared to keeping your data private? Being aware of our digital footprint, basically. Yeah. And we vote with our clicks, but we can vote with our wallets, too, right? Exactly. Supporting companies that make data privacy a priority, that says something. Choosing those apps, those services, it's like investing in a future where this is normal, not just a nice bonus. We've covered a lot today. The whole data privacy law scene, how companies are handling it, and what we can actually do about it to take some control back. It's complicated, always changing, but even knowing the basics is so important now with how much of our lives is online. Data privacy isn't just a tech thing anymore, it's a whole society thing. Well said. And it makes you wonder, what's next? Some people say all these data privacy laws will stifle innovation. Do you think that's true? Will stricter rules make companies find new, privacy-focused ways to do things, or will it slow everything down? It's a question that's not going away anytime soon, that's for sure. Something to think about as we all navigate this digital world. Until next time, stay curious and stay in control of your data.